Good afternoon and welcome to another webinar. My name is Dr. Ken Stewart, the health educator here at Beaver Medical Group. And before we get started, I want you to please check out our YouTube channel. And it's there on the screen. Um, it's, our YouTube channel is Epic Health Education. Epic Health Education, we have over 85 webinars to choose from. So take some time to check it out. But before we get started, I'd like to just make a, another announcement. I hope we're staying well, staying healthy, and staying, um, staying inside. This is a time where we need to stay home and relax and be safe because this coronavirus is, is giving us major problems. So please do that. So the topic for today is, what are your wishes? What are your wishes? Starting the conversation about advanced care planning and end of life care can be very difficult. However, end of life planning is more than just what kind of care you want in your final days. It's about such personal choices as who you want with you when the time comes and what will bring you and your family comfort and peace. We'll be answering four questions. Good afternoon and welcome to, welcome to another webinar. My name is Dr. Ken Stewart, the health educator here at Beaver Medical Group. And I wanna just thank you for the time to, that you're here. Before we get started, just like to make a couple of announcements. The first is check out our YouTube channel. The channel name is Epic Health Education. You can go um, to Google just type in Epic Health Education YouTube, and that should take you to it. Or go to youtube.com, type in in the search area, Epic Health Education, and you'll be able to get our channel. We have over 85 webinars you can choose from, so feel free to um, take the time to, to check it out. The topic for today, oh, I'm sorry. The second uh, announcement is please stay safe, stay inside as much as possible. Um, if you do go outside, make sure you have a mask and some gloves. Right now we are living in the time of the coronavirus and, and it's very, very sad. So please stay, stay home, stay inside. If you need to go, try to go shopping or go to your daily chores um, once a week, shopping, going to pharmacy once a week to reduce your risk and the risk um, of others. All right. Um, all right. Without further, without any further ado, let's, let's jump right in. The topic for today is what are your five wishes? What are your five wishes? Starting the conversation about advanced care planning and end of life care can be difficult. However, end of life planning is more than just what kind of care you want in your final days. It's about such personal choices as who you want with you when the time comes and what will bring you and your family comfort and peace. We'll be answering four questions. The first is, what are five wishes? The second is, how does the five wishes work? The third is, how does it look in practice? And the fourth is, how do we get started? 
What are five wishes? Five wishes is a document that lets you decide your final wishes, as well as how you'll be treated if you ever became seriously ill. The main point of five wishes is letting you make decisions about the end of your life just in case you cannot make them yourself. How does five wishes work? Think of it as a living will or as a conversation piece you can use to collect all your end of life wishes in a single place. Five wishes is a legal document in all states but eight. Alabama, Indiana, Kansas, New Hampshire, Ohio, Oregon, Texas, and Utah all require their own official documentation. Once you get started filling out your own five wishes document, you will have many important decisions to make. For example, you'll be asked to name someone you trust to act as your healthcare agent. But you'll also be asked to leave instructions for the types of medical care or for the type of medical care you want and don't want. In addition, you get to make decisions surrounding your comfort, your dignity, and other requests you have no matter how specific they are. In an article written by Paul Malley, the creator of Five Wishes, he stated that the questions may seem, I'm sorry, the questions that seem the least important wind up impacting families most. Examples include questions regarding pain management and what it takes for someone to feel comfortable, clean, and warm. Another example we can um, consider is, would you rather die at home if given a choice? Do you want music playing? Do you want people with you? Those little things may sound small, but this is where the true gift is, says Nally. Let's look at the five wishes in practice. Let me introduce you to a situation that occurred. John recently had a stroke and became incapacitated overnight. Mrs. Smith was able to make the necessary arrangements making Mr. Smith's passing more bearable. Well, how, how did she do that? Well, after her husband's first day in intensive care, for example, Mrs. Smith noticed in her husband's Five Wishes profile that he wanted pictures of his grandchildren in the room. Reading that detail, she suddenly felt good about leaving him long enough to go home and get cleaned up, knowing she could bring back all the family photos he wanted to be surrounded with. At one point, there was a disagreement among her children over whether their father should be taken off life support. But thanks to the details in the Five Wishes document, the entire family learned together that he didn't want to remain on life support if doctors were sure he would never come back. Thanks to five wishes, they all left the room in agreement to do what dad wanted. The result, Mrs. Smith says, would have been unlikely if her husband had not formally expressed his wishes himself. Finally, Mr. Smith had taken the time to note in his living will that his family members should make peace with each other before he died. The couple's two sons, 
spoke after a long-term estrangement. As a result, which brought Mrs. Smith an immense amount of peace at a very trying time. Not only did she get to see her sons begin speaking again, but she knew her husband's final wishes were being fulfilled. So, how to get started with five wishes? You start the five wishes by asking five questions. Wish number one, the person I want to make care decisions for me when I can't is, you fill in the blank, the kind of medical treatment I want or don't want is, how comfortable do I want to be? How do I want people to treat me? And lastly, what I want my loved ones to know is and these are the five questions for your five wishes. This brings us to the end of this webinar. Thank you for taking the time to view this webinar, um, to learn more about five wishes. Hope you have a good evening. Take care and have a good day and we'll catch up next week.